And we're back live again here from the Mobian stage inside of a uh, warehouse facility inside of Burbank, California, sunny Burbank, California. I'm Louis Tucci with Max on ZBrush and Paul Gabriel. Say hello, Paul. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Okay. Excited for our next presenter. It's going to be a, a really fun one. Are you ready for it? Seeing. Yeah, go ahead. Haven't seen him in a little while. We're yep. going to bring onto the stage live here Dan Catcher, the man himself. Here he comes, Dan the man <laughs> Catcher. All right. Father of dragons. Hey. hey. Master of monsters. He popped up into the virtual oh, yeah, yeah. Dan Catcher, looking larger than life. Wow, I'm huge. A virtual Wait, Dan. Not really, though. He's it's here. Not. Wow. Yeah. I really look a lot more gray, I think, than last time you guys saw me, huh? I mean, it's just... Your skin complexion is just the same as it always has, but what well, are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I stay out in the sun, but... Uh, yeah, it's definitely, there's def it's been, what, two years since I've seen everybody? Uh, uh, yeah. At a minimum. There. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I've been in yeah. like a hole. It's nice to be back. It's nice to see you guys. Yeah, it's it's nice, nice to see all of you. There you go. There Look you at go. this. I love it. What's happening? I love it. Yes. <laughs> I, and we will I know. I'm so used to like a show. real audience, which is sad. Maybe They are real. They're, they're, uh, they're real. Virtually real. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. Real. it's good to yeah, see you. Yeah, I know you. what you mean. Having the audience to talk to and mingle with is a different feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So I miss I miss that part, but I'm glad that, you know, we all get to at least see each other this way, which, yeah. is, which is fun. The well, virtual. thank you for taking time out of your day to, to come. My down. pleasure. Actually, My pleasure. You came up, not down. You came up to us here yeah. in Burbank. Oh uh, yeah, right. I'm coming from Culver City, yeah. and uh, coming up to meet my good buddy Paul, Dr. Paul Zhivago, who we yeah. just came on before, and we've yeah. been uh, touring around. We just got back from Austin, did a tour at the, uh, the Prostodontic. God, can't even pronounce these things correctly. That's how bad I am. Prostodontics. Prostodontics. Very, very uh, toothy endeavor between the two of you, though. Toothy. Traveling tooth show. You guys need a Te traveling T-shirt. Yeah, right? I swear, like the destinations that you guys are going to in the back T-shirt, like one of those old school shirts. Yeah, you I guys mean, are everywhere. I, 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 you know, I was doing a very similar thing um, before the pandemic with Wacom, yeah. um, doing tours around Latin America, and oh, I got awesome. to go to, yeah, I got to go to Ireland, wow. doing what? this whole thing. Where really? have you been? Tell us about it. So what? I've been, so so far with Wacom, I was at, uh, I went to Argentina, I went to Mexico, I went to uh, Brazil, I went to Colombia. Wow, that's um, awesome. And, and I, do, I went to the Dingle Peninsula in Ireland with wow. a different company. So, wow. yeah, I got to travel a lot because of the Game of Thrones with the dragons. And, you know, yeah. people love yeah. that stuff. So, And you've survived the pandemic. You're here. You're live. I did. I'm a little, sorry, sorry. If I seem a little sniffly, it's just simply because, you know, I got a little cold. But it's, I'm not going to get anybody sick. Don't worry. No, I'm no, no. I'm for not, everything you guys I'm not worried doing. about that at all. Good. And you guys, of course, are safe where yeah. you are. They're safe. <laughs> they're, they're, they're it's good. great to have. They're not, with, they're not within spinning. They're not, distance. Yeah, there's no, no, no. It's, no. it's, it's, it's good to have like the father of dragons, the master of monsters, back on the stage with us here. We, yeah. we met, uh, some years ago, you sat in the hot seat, but today it's a little different. There's not that fervor of the audience. They're, they're tapping their keyboards and following along. How okay. do you feel to be back uh, doing a, another Zebra Summit with us after all I, these it years? Is, it's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. I was just like, I'm just so glad to be out of my hole and out in the world again. But things have changed for you uh, in some ways, uh, very positively and, and drastically in, in others as well. Like yeah. Others. I mean, like, so I'm, you know, I'm kind of not doing the VFX so much anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm working in uh, actually a lot of stop motion animation. Oh, wow. And uh, puppetry animation at AMGI Studios at the moment. And before then, I was working at this place called Encore, um, Encore Visual Effects where uh, you'll be seeing some of my work coming out, Dead Boy Detectives, uh, Doom Patrol, did a lot of work oh, for those cool. two shows. Um, so that'll, be, that'll still be coming out. Um, really excited about the Dead Boy Detective stuff, and I, I can't show any of it yet because we, I don't think a single thing is premiered. But at least I got some, I got some B-roll stuff of concepts and stuff that won't be used. So you're going, you're going from digital, in this case, to physical puppetry. No, no well, yes and no. Because my plan is, is that we're, we're, we're actually, I'm still working in ZBrush, in the computer, but we're going to print it out. And then instead of doing everything through rendering, we're thinking of actually doing like replacement head photograph. Oh, cool. Uh, we're we're going to see. It's, it's, we're still in the sort of beginning stages with our animations. Um, but it's, it's always a mix of both. There's, there's, there's always some practical or some, some uh, digital elements, scanning. We use a lot of that technology, so we'll scan real models, bring them in, and right. I'll, I'll re-sculpt them in, the, in ZBrush as well. 
Um, I like your energy today. He's standing. He's ready to motor. He's, he's oh yeah, I'm like standing. I can't even move him. It's Dan. Well, yeah, it's Dan. morning. You, you, I get, obviously, it's been a while. You don't remember. This is Dan. This is how Dan operates. Like, he's right on our level. Yeah. You right. Like yeah, I'm, I'm ready I'm to like, go. I'm ready to rock. You rock know, him. like you're the rock. We're the roll. That's what we're doing right now. <laughs> All right. Now. So I mean, like, yeah, a lot of people, of course. I'm mean, dragons. I. I would think that you know they would have maybe gone down in popularity after a while, but no, no, no people are still obsessed with them, and people still want to make them. And every other day, I'm getting somebody that uh, is asking me, you know, how to make them, or you know, what are your tricks, what are your secrets, where's what are your reference, um, where do you get your ideas from, and it, that has not died down. It still seems to be very popular. There's a lot of people want to know, and a lot, I think it inspires people to want to, you know, make art. Is to make sure. cool stuff. Everybody wants to make cool stuff. Nobody wants to make boring stuff, I guess, yeah. right? Did yeah. you think that when you started making the first one that, you, that you'd be all this way down the rabbit hole of dragondom? No. No, in fact, no. I, 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 honestly, for me, dragons, I love dragons. But for me, the whole reason I'm doing what I'm doing was to try to resurrect dinosaurs. I mean, honestly, yeah. when I was a kid, I became obsessed. I went to the Museum of Natural History. I lived in New York City uh, for my entire youth. And I spent every weekend at the Museum of Natural History in New York Hello. studying dinosaurs, looking at them being like, God, what, what does that thing look like if it were alive, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I really have devoted my life to understanding anatomy, physiology, comparative anatomy, um, you know, paleontology, so that, at least to me, that I could bring these things back to life as much as, as I can. Um, and, and that was my goal. So I was working on Terra Nova years ago, which was a show Steven yep. Spielberg was yep. producing, yep. which you know yep. I thought was going to be like you know the greatest thing in the world. And I've, I've told the story before, but essentially, you know, Game of Thrones guys came at me and said, "Hey Dan, uh, would you would you want to redesign the dragon for our show? Because you know we wanted something different than what yeah. we had." And I said, "Yeah, sure." And I really didn't think twice about it. You know, it was like a dragon compared to a dinosaur. Who cares? Dinosaurs are real. Dragons aren't, they're silly things. But um, I watched the show after I actually worked on the second season, and I was like, excuse me, I didn't drink this water. I was like, holy cow, this show's amazing. This is, yeah. you know, effing great. Okay, yeah, let's Earth. go with it. So Terra Nova got canceled, Game of Thrones stuck, dragons, people loved them. I wasn't that surprised. I mean, I had already had, you know, pretty good successes with McFarlane toys years before that making dragons. I noticed that even they're back on dragons now. Go figure. Yeah, mm. I like that. I like that. There's a there's a popularity of the dragon over the wolves. I like the wolves in the first season there myself, but I it, mean, yeah, it's each their own. Yeah, I mean, you know, so so they're still popular, and people want to know the secrets of them. So I guess I can uh, I'll share with you guys some secrets. Oh, secrets. Here we go. I like his face when he does that. Can you do that again? Can you Somebody was asking in chat, are you guys going to have tips and tricks? I'm like, the whole summit's tips whole and tricks. Summit. Secrets. Yeah. Here come the dragon secrets. Sit tight, buckle, buckle up in the words of Paul Gabriel. We're about to take a wild ride into the zebras. I like, uh, I like the little graphic I saw on your ankle there. You got a little mushroom on your socks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you see my mushroom socks? <laughs> <laughs> you guys see that? Um, oh, my mic's falling off here. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. As long as we can still hear you. You can still hear me, right? Oh, yes. All right. I can hear you. We won't fall out of the here. <laughs> yeah, but up mushroom socks, Amanita mascara. That's all I'm going to say. That's it. We're taking mushroom another socks. level here on the stage. You got to love mushroom socks, you know? Yeah. So this is, you know, I'm just going to... Uh, Are you micro-dosing or macro-dosing? I mean, there's a big question to ask people these days. Just kidding. What's happening here? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, so or I'll let this play. So essentially what I'm going to be showing you guys here, and I'm going to talk while it's playing, is some of my philosophy about how I'm working in ZBrush and why you, this, this um, I know there's a lot, of, a lot of everybody's like, well, why should I learn ZBrush? Why should I sculpt when you have all these AI programs that are going to do all the art for me by just simply typing in a few words, right? And a lot of people maybe think that that's going to be the future. And I'm here to tell you, <coughs> think again, is not how it's going to work. Unless you're satisfied with all of your characters having like nine fingers on a hand and some goofy looking eyes and some really weird looking stuff, there's a reason why I do what I do. And a reason why when I make something, it kind of looks cool, or I hope it looks cool. And that reason is, is because I am 
it's all about form and function. Now, the computer is really good at sort of looking at, you know, like images and sticking them together and taking stuff that's been done and making something new out of it. But when I look at one of those images, I can always tell that it's made by an AI. I can see an AI image in a second. When I'm making something, I'm not just thinking about a two-dimensional image. I am really thinking about what's happening inside of the body before I even put on a slab of muscle. I'm thinking about the skeleton. And now it's very convenient that Paul and I work together, Paul, Dr. Paul Zhivago, the dentist, because you know one of the first things that I'm thinking about with any time I'm designing either a character or a human, doesn't even matter, believe it or not, are the teeth. Teeth are so integral to what your character is going to be doing for a living. So in this case, I am really, when you're looking at what I'm doing on my screen here, I am just literally taking my dragon's teeth and setting them in the skull so that they function. Number one goal of anything looking good is functioning, right? When something functions well, it will look good. I promise you. Why? Well, an example would be if you think about what a, um, well, let's think about it like a Nissan Cube. No offense to the designers of the Nissan Cube. I don't know if you've ever seen a Nissan Cube. I'd prefer not to. Most no people would Nissan prefer Cube. not to. I, I find it to be absolutely <laughs> one of the most hideous things I've ever seen. Why? No offense to you guys, I'm sorry, but your car doesn't really function well. It doesn't look aerodynamic. You know, you might as well stick freaking square wheels on the thing as far as I'm concerned. And the asymmetry of it, it offends me. I like functionality. <laughs> <laughs> So I saw you were using the gizmo duplicate. I am so using the one, gizmo duplicate. You had one duplicate. tooth and you're just duplicating with your gizmo. Just duplicating. And you'll also yeah. see like as I'm working now, I, I have kind of like a new process. Thankfully, you guys got incredibly smart and made it so that I can go switch between, um, what's that called again, Dynamesh yeah. and Sculptress mode. So yeah. right now I'm working pretty much, I, I'll go from a Dynamesh and where I need more detail, I'll switch back to Sculptress. And where I need to switch, fuse things back together again, I'll go back to Dynamesh. So I'm constantly switching between Sculptress and Dynamesh. I do that how, long are you, how long are you staying in that, where you're in that Dynamesh Sculptress mode? A long time. Marriage. You're staying in that for a long time. We're gonna be, I'm going to be in there right up until the point where I need to put scales on a dragon. Okay. okay? So for now, what you're watching is, again, I am just going to go in here, and I'll fast forward a little bit through this stuff. But essentially, you're watching me sculpt like bones... And of course, I'm going to set eyes into the skull right away. Again, functionality. And once things start to function well, oh, also too, you'll notice like there's holes in my skull here, right? Why are there holes in the skull of a dragon? So you guys that are making dragons at home, right? Why do dinosaurs have holes in their face? Anybody know? You've seen a dinosaur skull here. Let's just stop this for a sec. All right. And let's just look at... Uh, Let's look at my little Spinosaurus model here. Oh, okay. hold on. Okay. So you look here at a Spinosaurus, and you see there's these big holes in his face. Why? Same reason you put holes in big metal sheets so they don't get too heavy. When something this is as big as a Spinosaurus, right, that skull is really heavy. If you've ever, I, I once had the fortune of Breathtaking. Uh, lifting an elephant skull when I went to the zoo. And I was in you did. amazed at how much that weighed and how really? big it was. You can't lift an elephant skull. No. No, no yeah, way. I, no way. That's breathtaking. That's an amazing piece. Where is that one? This one is, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I just found it. Okay. I just found it online. I was like, oh, yeah. Because yeah. I, 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 and again, like when I talk about functionality, you know, I'm looking, I'm always looking for something that's functioning well. Yeah. And when I'm talking about teeth, it's also very important. So I can look at a Spinosaurus, and you can look at a Spinosaurus, and just by looking at it, if you have a slightest inclination of how anatomy works, excuse me, my cold, um, you know what he eats. You can tell what this thing eats just by its mouth. I know what he eats. He eats fish. Why do I know that? Because look at the curve of the jaw, right? His teeth aren't straight. Dan, take this. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Stanley. Oh, yeah. Thank you, guys. Oh, allergies, colds. Oh, damn it. Don't ask me why I had a box of Kleenex under there. Any case, so again, when I'm designing a dragon, I'm thinking about what it's eating. In this case, dragons, what do they eat? I guess children. Uh, Don't go into the forest. 
people, uh, cows, you know, fun stuff like that. Or sometimes I make a dragon and it's like more Asian style and we're just, I'm just, you know, having some fun. Don't you think it's fascinating that they exist in myth and lore across the entire ethnos of the globe in I, different you, areas? Like you know, and it's, and it's so, it is so weird too that not only do they exist across the globe in, in different areas, but we all love them. I, I don't know what it is, but like it's everybody loves them. I, I loved them as a kid. You yeah. know, I, I think everybody's greatest fantasy is to one day walk into a room and either see a T-Rex or a dragon. We want them know. to be real. We want them to be real. And so, you know, I get, I get, I'm personally disappointed when I see a show and there's a dragon in it and it doesn't really look real. Like that to me, I, I just find it, it's very sad and makes me very sad when I see it. So please. Make your you dragons know, look real. Just, just, just put some anatomy in there and, and think about physiology and stuff, and you know. And so when I'm talking about thinking about anatomy and physiology, um, I'm always again looking at reference. So while I'm sculpting, you know, I'm going to look at pictures of crocodiles, which I love, or sun gazer lizards because they're very dragonish looking. Or I'm going to look at these guys, or emu feet, or little wing lizards so on and so forth, to get ideas for scale patterns. And eventually I'll go and start making, taking an image like this one and converting it into a black and white image where I'm actually going in and drawing these little scales. And I'm going to get into what I'm going to do with an image like this in a little bit. But so the basis for a lot of my detail is going to come from drawings like this. But we'll get into that. Let's, let's, I fast forward a bit. Don't rush on our account. You're here, for the, you're here in the hot seat for a minute. So I got a little bit of time. Which, oh, whoa. No, we're not going in there yet. I was still on the video. Ha, ha, ha. All right, well, let's skip this video. And let's go to the next video. So we can get a little bit more idea. So eventually, after I get done, huh? Try using VLC. Right click and do VLC. Yeah. That's a good idea. OK, here we go. Oh yeah, so this one's going to move a little faster. Before you go faster, I just want to tell you, I really appreciate that there's not an inconsistency to your level of energy across the years. You are still the same zany <laughs> fellow that you've always been. You deserve the accolades. I'm so glad that you're here to be with us uh, on behalf of myself. Louis Tucci and Paul Gabriel live on the ZBrush Summit floor. I can't believe you're back with us, but the same exuberant energy and, and boyish charm. Carry on. Oh, right, boyish. Yeah, God, I, you know, I look like an old man. And I, and I gotta go see Dr. Z about my teeth, but that's a whole nother thing. Me too. That's two of us. You should. Doc, you know, the guy's amazing. Oh What's my God. What's happening here now on your screen? Mm. We're moving at the speed of the flash. Wow. This is actually real time, me sculpting. No, I'm kidding. Maybe I should slow this down a little <laughs> bit and kind of kind of, show you what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So one of my big tricks here, this is a new technique where, oh man, forget this stupid video. Let me just show you live. Let's, let's go live. Let's do it live. Do it live. Do it live. We're doing it live. I can't hear you, Kendari. So later on, we'll, I'll show a more completed version of this guy. But essentially, when we're making a dragon, oh, let's actually, let's, uh, you know, I'm going to take it down a little bit just to kind of show you guys. So one of the great things that we can do now at ZBrush is add little pieces of geometry, take away little pieces of geometry, push and pull, stick things wherever we want, complete and total, utter freedom in ways that even with clay I don't have. And a great thing to do, uh, let's, um, here, we'll open up. I like your pace, Dan. I really do. I like, your pace. I like, Dan. I like Dan's pace. I'm I like glad you speed. do because most people just fire me for it. But you know, hey, oh, there he is. Oh, there's Drogon. Well, that's fun. Well, I haven't seen him, in a, him or her. You know, I don't even know if it's a him or a her, to be honest with you. It's like it. It's an it. Oh, I forgot to bring my custom. Ah, let's see, so let's subdivide that up for a sec. And let's just go into a little bit of how I make anatomy. So in case I was showing you that video, let's just make the anatomy of an arm real quick for a dragon. The easiest thing I love to do now is I always, whenever I'm starting a creature, is using Z-spheres. It's a little, you know, Z-spheres are totally old. We haven't seen them for a while, but they're great. And why are they great? Because it allows me 
to play with proportions and functionality before I ever set into any kind of detail. And what I mean by that is literally I like to play with stick figures. So the first thing I'm always going to do, bring out the Z-sphere, and I'm going to go into transform, I'm going to activate symmetry, and I'm going to turn on the floor so I know which direction I'm going to go in. So anytime I'm going to make any kind of anatomy, I'm going to start here, and let's just add just a couple of spheres just for fun. I'm going to make this dragon real quick. So let's just make a wing. I'm going to just add a couple of spheres here. I'm going to switch it over to move. And you see now real quickly, instead of drawing lines, I'm just going to move spheres around. We're on top of the dragon now. Right, so the we're on top. The only place to be is on top of the dragon. You want to be on top. You don't want to be under the dragon. No. Mm, no. No, I would prefer not to be under, under the dragon. It's a glorious way to die if you're going to die. I mean, yeah. you're at the mouth of the dragon, but sure. still. It makes an epic scene. Matthew McConaughey. Sure. Yes. Too soon? I don't think everyone's going to know the movie you're talking about. Oh, Reign of Fire. Yeah. yeah. Everyone should yeah. know that one oh, because that's that, a great dragon. That's that one's great. great. Well, I mean, that's Miles, Miles Tevis. Tevis. Yeah, what Miles a scene. Tevis. What a Tevis. master. Tevis. Come on, guys. What a scene. He, I mean, McConaughey comes shaved head, full beard. I mean, a beard awesome. that rivals even my own. Miles riding on a amazing. tank. Amazing designer. He's He's smoking incredible. cigar. You guys are Miles Tevis. I'm thinking about Matthew McConaughey. I know. You're, you're a specimen. stuck in the Hollywood world right you're now. We're talking artistic world. I mean, I'm hoping one day I get to. I've spoken to Miles on the phone, but. We can make this happen for you. Yeah. I want to meet Miles. I love Awesome. Great guy. I, his work is, is, you know, it's what inspired me to do what I do. Him and uh, I would say um, Joe Dorovsky. No, not Joe Rob. Dorovsky. Rob Boutique. Sorry, guys. Uh, the D and D dudes. Harry Hill. Uh, like uh, like Larry Elmore. Oh, okay. And, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, you're gushing now. This is good. This is this is a joy. A straight joy. Well, I just think about these guys, and they make me, you know, just to think about those that come before you that are masters. It just, you know, it makes me cry. To, and then to be you know, accepted at, I guess, to their level, too, is just more than my brain sometimes. Well today. deserved. So, um, but Here they, we are they, with the wing, though. Here we are with the wing. Well, okay. so, okay, so let's just talk about a wing and, and kind of a fun thing that I like to do. So, just real quick, I've made a, just a preliminary sort of wing for a dragon. And this is what you guys should do at home, too. And after I get done, just making this very simple form, I'm going to look here at adaptive skin. Now, you can go ahead and, and just hit uh, make adaptive skin if you want but you'd get kind of a mess. So what you should do is, I don't know why it's set this way by default. I take this mesh density down to one, and I take this DynaMesh resolution and turn that down to zero. So that when I create an adaptive skin, um, it you know, will look like this right? instead of a DynaMesh thing. Because I don't want to have a bunch of topology right now. I want to be able to be able to move things quickly right at the beginning. Yeah, you prefer to work lower at the beginning. At the beginning. Than, than have the added resolution that the default is 256. Some people, some people do that, they leave it on. Depends on the piece, I guess. It, you know what, yeah. it, it doesn't, you know, now actually come to think of it, nowadays with sculptures, really it doesn't even matter. Yeah, and the Z-remesher too. And the Z-remesher. Yeah, you clicking those things on and off. Yeah, so for you guys at home that are like, thinking old school, like, oh, I have to worry about topology, oh, I have to worry about all this technical Not stuff. Not the case. No. Wave an arm. Don't Wave even think arm. about it. Not Please, the case. do not think about it. Right, Paul? Don't. 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 Uh, I live in the toy world, so I don't ever worry about the Paul. Yeah, we don't think about that Talk anymore. Talk about a kid. Right. Uh, I'm a large child. Huh. This is why I like having a child, actually. Yeah. Because when All she right. gets to be, when she gets to get older, she's like, Dad, get out, get, get out of here. Like, yeah. This time I can actually do things with her, so. I digress. Moving on back to Dan. <laughs> that was where I hold up the card for you. That was a Palmo. I don't Thank know what's sure what's Thank going you. on anymore. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go now to this skin Z sphere. And what's great is because everything's sort of in this low res, low res mode, I can just quickly, well, let's hide the other sphere. I can just quickly smooth out areas. Oh, you're really defining the uh, what will eventually be the bone structure. Right. And where you have those chondrils. And you're always interior, starting interior. with that. You're, you're, that's your first thing. You're that's the first thing first. I'm going to do. Yeah. Absolutely. Clever. And Very also, what's thing. nice is, too, is I, you know, I'll actually really go in and, and complete the whole Z-sphere mesh. I'm kind of doing this quick now. But I'll keep the Z-sphere mesh as well, because later on, I'm going to use that to pose the character. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep that thing. I want to have... Like a rig. Like a rig. I'm going to use that to rig it just, just like, so when you're looking at an image, say, like, this one... You know, I don't want to present a dragon to you guys that's in a zero pose, like floating in space. It's very boring. Like a T-pose dragon. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. It's boring. Who wants to look at that? Blech. So when I present something to a client, I want to at least Did make it look that? a little exciting. You know, 
not something boring, and I'm going to put it in a pose, and I'm going to use the Z-spheres to do that. But more, if I, have, if I had another hour, I'd show you guys how to do that. I like the sound you made when you presented the a -boy. Did you catch what he did there? Did. That was good. I did that again. I rewind that tape there. It happened so fast like it never happened at all. No, you did it again. <laughs> I do the blah. All right, so in any case. We have so, the audio bit here. What we have now, too, are some really great new tools. Uh, what I love to do is use balloons instead balloons. of just muscles. Look at this guy, balloons even. Look, yeah, so I'll go in now and I'll say, all right, so where's a, you know, this is a wing, this is the forearm, it'll say this, this is the, whatever, the arm. Uh, <laughs> my anatomy. We got you. <laughs> we get it, no, we're with we're you. With you. And, and all you have to do now, so you say, well, I need a muscle to sit on this bone, okay. So I've got, instead of mask pen now, I've got mesh balloon, and I'll just do 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 I draw a little balloon here. Jumping jillikers, it's as easy as clicking and dragging and you've got yourself a muscle. <laughs> How long will you like be waiting this? to use that one? Jumping, excuse me, do that one again? Jumping jillikers, okay. it's as easy as clicking and dragging a shape onto the canvas. Now, I can't believe it, do it again, Dan. Oh yeah, here, okay. To, yeah. I know. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> oh wait, oh my high keys, oh wait. I, the, you know what, I should have set up my hotkeys. Oh, that's but okay. B, M, move elastic, that'll work. Oh yeah, look at this. Wow. Well, what happened there? Uh, it's doing some funky stuff. In any case, what we, what we do want though, however, is we do not want the muscles and the bones right now to be on the same object. So first thing I'm gonna do, even though I've created one muscle, is I'm gonna separate this muscle, and I'm gonna say split hidden. Hey, that's because they have polygroups. Well, they have polygroups, but there's another reason. There's another reason why. And that's because form has to sit on top of form. And we want to be able to pull muscles around bones so that we actually get intersection points. So the only way we can do that is by using this little tool called snake hook brush. Wow. So I'm going to go ahead now, open up my snake hook brush. Where is this snake hook? Wait, B, S. So See, I have all this hockey B S A. No, it'd just be S. Oh, it'd just be S. Yeah. And then you'd get the S brushes. Snake hook. There you go. Where? Oh my God. Oh, I can't find it. Right there. Stop. To the right. Oh, there it is. Snake hook. There you go. And it's going to give me this warning. It works best with Sculptures Pro activated. And you can go ahead and activate Sculptures Pro or not for this part, doesn't matter. But what's nice about this snake hook brush is that if I hold it down in the negative while I'm drawing, it will pull my form over the surface and allow me to wrap around. Wait, say that again? Okay. When so you hold it down in the negative. When you hold you it down, so instead of, so see it's on minus, right? right? So if, if it's on minus and I pull, it'll follow the surface. Yeah, he's using the Alt key. And if I and, and now if I mix that with Sculptress, it'll follow the surface, holding down the Alt key, and I can pull it out almost infinitely uh -huh. to make a muscle. And I could smooth it out too. So at this point now, yeah, we're going to switch to Sculptress mode. Somewhere right? there's a kid watching you do this. You want to make sure they get their hotkeys. So that's an Alt right there. You hold the Alt and hold the Alt. Oh wow! And you're doing the mask again. And we'll do another little. Get that. Isn't that oh, sweet? A little thing, and then I'll use my snake hook brush. And again, I'm, one of the other tricks, too, and this I learned from, from sculpting. Traditionally, in New York City, I went to the, uh, it was called the, um, uh, excuse me. It was called. Um, Central Park? No, not <laughs> Central Park. Talk about this. The Art Students League of New York City. Ah, okay. Not messing with you. I, I studied that. figurative sculpture at the Art Students League of New York City, which I think is still there. Oh, yes. Very much still there. Illustrious. And if you happen to live in New York City, or be in New York City, or want to go to New York City to learn how to sculpt, I highly recommend that school. Um, nice plug, Dan. Well, you know. Natural. You know, it, they, 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 they really helped me. A lot, Period. and they really taught me yeah. how to work from life. Yeah. And working from life, you know, nothing beats it. Speaking of working from life, what you're doing right now is phenomenal. If I had this as a kid, if there's somewhere there's some young people watching. If I was a kid watching this, I might never leave my house again. Uh, yeah, kind of. That's the problem. Give me the ZBrush. Let's go. We are at that point. Uh oh. No, it's frozen. Oh, I see. Ah, my. Somehow or other. 
What's great is too now, because I'm using polygroups, that I can, I can just hold down this one part of the tricep, in this case I'm making, reverse the mask, and pull that out without affecting the other parts. It's like you're drawing in 3D. Exactly. What a time, Paul, what a time. And you're still keeping it on the surface with the Alt key? Uh-huh. Mm. So again, I could just pull it in there. Those you're finding the origin insertion points that make sense. What are you using for anatomy for, because a dragon, like you said, doesn't exist. Right. So when you were doing this and you were making the muscling forms, what did you, a bat? What were you pulling from? Or, <sighs> do you remember? A lot of things. Yeah. So, so if, if I go back to Drogon, I mean, we could pick out the parts of them and I could tell you what is what. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and the total polygon count of your dragons are what, around 150 million across the subtools? Is that no. what you for or, Drogon, the yeah. completed Drogon was about 200 something million. 200 something million. So really, I mean, what it came down to was like, for this version I have, let's just hide the Z-sphere. Do you think it's possible that they're real? That what, the dragons are real? Yeah, they are real. They're real. They're real. Yeah, that's what I think. I took them from possible. another planet. <laughs> I <laughs> conjured them. Maybe without wings, I mean, but they, you know, the Komodo dragon. The well, iguana. I mean, a lot of people must think they're real because they keep I can see if a lot of co people kind of like use it as like an anatomy reference now. Yeah, and you've been to you've been to Central South America. You've probably seen an angry iguana or two at uh, at some point. I've I, seen an I, angry you know, iguana. I have an, like I an have a, iguana. I have an angry iguana at home. There, I see. <laughs> and it's totally unscripted too. I mean, this is amazing. What's well, your, actually, it's your your angry, I have a bearded dragon. What's the bearded dragon's name? Rocky. Rocky. Rocky Lizard. I love Rocky Lizard. Even though she doesn't really love me, she's kind of stupid. But. <laughs> No, it's fine. <laughs> Why would you say that about your own pet? Because she's a reptile. Oh, God. She can't help it that she's dumb. We've got to stop this species as a right here. We're going to get canceled in three seconds of show. Oh, but it's, it's, a, it's the fact that she's stupid that makes her a good pet. Because if she were smart enough, she'd run out of there and be like, I'm out of here. This is horrid. You're living in this hole. Into the streets suck. of New York. Well, in, in, in Culver City. Actually, well, you're in Culver City now. Yeah, she lives in Culver City, so it actually doesn't suck. It's kind of nice. Yeah, it's sunny outside. It's so anyway, sunny. would you sit and ever watch this rocky lizard of yours as reference? Oh, yeah. I'll bet, right? But, you know, I got her, I got her after I had already finished the show. It okay. was kind of like a pandemic pet thing. My kid was bored. We were at home all day. Okay. And he's like, I want a reptile. And he was going to get, uh, what is those things called? The, 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 the gecko. Right. Little, the, he was probably pressing press you for a dragon, and you said, there's no way you're getting a dragon. No, he, he, I used to actually, one of, one of the ways I got him to behave himself when he was a kid okay. was I would threaten to show him clips of my dragon burning people alive, and that would terrify him <sighs> wow. into just being like, okay, yeah, whatever, Dad. I, I, can't, I can't stand a Are second Are you hearing this right now? He used his, his clips of his cinema work to threaten his child into behaving properly. He said, mm -hmm. look at this dragon burning these humans. Behave yourself. <laughs> yeah, if you want to call um, Child Protective Services, now is the time. Uh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> the show goes on. <laughs> Everything under the sun. Okay, what's happening here? All right, so, so we, when we talk about, like, we we're asking, like, oh, so what is this dragon made out of? Like, what creatures make up a freaking dragon? Um, well, lots of things. So for the head, obviously, we've got two different creatures kind of mixed together here. You've got... Uh, a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Actually, you have three different creatures. It's a T-Rex. No, actually, it's more than three. It's a T-Rex, an eagle, and a, a, a horned lizard. Oh, and part, what's that other thing I showed you? The, this thing, the sun gazer. This oh, guy. the other lizard. Yeah. This guy, the sun gazer lizard. But mostly, mostly crocodile and T-Rex and eagle. And it's important that you choose what animals you're referencing correctly. Now, you know, there's all these new shows and different people have their different ideas about how dragons are looking. I, I think they're all great. I think it's all viable. I think it's wonderful. I have my own personal likes and dislikes. Um, so for me, there's a certain, there has to be a certain psychology to dragons. Like what makes something cool? Well, to the ancient Greeks, what made something cool was the Medusa head. You saw a Medusa yep. head on everything, right? All over the place. Medusa head here, Medusa it head there. Inspired me to grow my hair out. Right. Or that, or um, a hydra you'd see a lot of in, in their Greek culture. So why? Headhunters would put the big scary skulls 
right, to decorate their, their homes. Um, right. The Aztecs obviously had some very scary art. But the one thing that all these guys have in common is, is that they found the most dangerous animals, those things which make us afraid, and they took those and made those into deities, right? So when we're talking about dragons, we want to find those creatures that we fear in instinctively, right? What is it that makes a crocodile so scary? Probably the fact, well, this is actually an alligator. But what is it about an alligator or, say, a crocodile that makes them both cool and scary looking? Well, they've got all the scales and all that great detail and stuff, right? But it's that weird smile that they have, right? If you notice this, no matter what you do, my dragon has the same thing. When he closes his mouth, he smiles. Why does a dragon smile? And why does a crocodile smile? Are they happy? No. Uh, it's just simply because that's how their jaw functions. It just happens to function well to have that curve on that upper part to pull the masseters in. So uh, like, it's partially psychology, but also mostly functionality. And the two have to work together in order to get what I consider to be a successful design. Um, it's a good little uh, observation, good little tip. The small thing sometimes pushes the realism. The, yeah, and it's, 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 it's going to be a collection of functionalities, too. Yeah. You know, like, you, you, we don't think about it, but we are predisposed to find things that aren't functioning well. When we, no offense to anybody, but, you know, if somebody's born with a physical deformity or something that doesn't look, you know, average or normal, it leaps out at you. You see it. You can't help but see it, right? Because that's the way our brains are wired. We're wired to see that things are working. When we see a car with square wheels, we know it's not going anywhere, right? So when you're making your art, or when I'm making my art, that's my number one job is I don't want to make a car with square wheels. I don't want to start adding, you know, limbs onto something that has served no purpose and are just going to be dragging. You know, so like, why doesn't the Game of Thrones dragon, for instance, have arms and wings? It's really hard to figure out a way to get something to fly, how to get a creature to fly when he's carrying extra weight, you know? So if the arms, if you have arms and they're not part of a wing and they're not supporting weight, well, what are they doing? Why are they even there, right? Why doesn't the T-Rex have big arms to pick up things? It didn't need to, right? And it had to save weight because it's so massive. You put a bunch of arms in there that are huge, well, now it's got to worry about these things flailing around when it already has a huge mouth and these big legs to do exactly the job it needs to do. And that's why it looks the way it does. So again, we're always thinking about, I'm always thinking about what, what is the job that something has to do. So I'll digress a little bit. In the meantime, uh, aside from dragons, I did get to do some fun stuff. I was working for this company, Encore, and we were doing some concepts here and there for like Atrocitus, oh, cool. or Green Lantern, which didn't really go anywhere. And then we were doing like Lion's Mane concepts, and that didn't really, I don't think these worked out. All ZBrush work. Yeah, don't rush through it so much. Let, let's oh yeah, look at that. Pause, look at that guy, looking good. And then I had to do just a little quick concept of somebody whose head exploded. Well, why is that loading? So I kind of did myself um, with my face exploded. More funness you can do with ZBrush. You can like smoke. You can like yeah, blow your blow your head off without actually having to blow your head off, which is really nice and convenient. Um, or sometimes it's something simple like there was a this guy Isamat Cole, another just a little portrait from Green Lantern. Fun because he has reptile scales. That's really neat. Yeah, That's that was fun. neat. Mm, leave that up there a second. Guy. Look at that. Really fit in that Green Lantern costume, I like it. Yeah, and then sometimes, you know, making apes, this is for, this is actually the underskin from Monsieur Mala, who appears on Doom Patrol, who I got to make for that show. And I, I don't really have clips of him, because, uh, uh, yeah, that's all a long story, but in case you get the idea. Substance work, ZBrush. Um, we had to do, like, a monkey, a capuchin monkey for this one thing. And just to, just to make a simple animation for a capuchin monkey, you see like all this neck anatomy has to be there now. So this is like part of the process. We're always trying to make new neck anatomy. 
or sometimes I'm just doing fun concepts of demons. Why, can we go back to the neck anatomy for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in the case of the neck anatomy, why, why, so, um, why so important? Tell the people at home. Well, things have to move. And when I move my neck, there's a lot of deformities happening there. And none of that, you know, if, if you, you, none of that is built into a, a rigging program, at least yet. Some of it is, but you want to be able to have that anatomy there so that the skin knows how to pull. And when you move your neck, the neck muscles move right. And there's algorithms now, of course, that will automatically, not automatically, but that you can take this geometry and turn it into bouncing, flexible muscle that goes from hard to rigid. Um, and that seems to be standard practice now. When I first started in the industry, it certainly was not. But through the years, it has become, and I think, I think now every, Serious VFX rig, as far as I know, is using a, muscle, a dynamic muscle and skeletal system almost everywhere across the board. So for you guys that want to be character artists, I cannot stress how important anatomy is. Do not think that just you know, working from the outside is going to be enough, that you're a great illustrator and that that's going to be enough to be a great character artist because it's... You, you got to know anatomy. You have to be able to push and pull and understand how things are going to work. Good advice. Good advice. So definitely, yeah, for you guys out there, definitely study it. Um, questions coming in there? Time check for you, Dan. You got 20 minutes left. 20 minutes, Dan. Oh, Any right. Any questions, Good. Paul? Any Your questions time. on the online what? there? Any chat questions coming in? No questions. Uh, well, I've been answering ch questions as we go as well. So this is Dan Catcher, for those that are just joining us, asked about that. <clears throat> She's sharing us with some dragon stuff uh, that he's been working on for uh, Game of Thrones. Yep. And talking about anatomy. So I, are there any questions yet that popped up? If you have a question, throw it in there. We'll try and get it to Dan. Yeah, I I'm, I'm, I'm love answering questions if you yeah. have anything. But, um, and, oh, this is, was a Kelpie for Supergirl. And I really liked it, but they turned it into like a a water monster, like it was just made of water. And so all the detail I did with all the skin and stuff they got rid of and blah, blah, blah. whatever. <laughs> it's safe to say if somebody needs a dragon, they're calling you first at this point. I mean, yeah, except that I've been kind of busy lately. Okay. Uh, you know, for me, hmm. I mean, honestly, when I do something, I really like it to be like, you've never seen it before. So when I first did Game of Thrones, I really wanted to make a dragon and do something where it was like, I haven't really seen anything that looked like that before, at least not on TV. And um, so I did that, and that was really fun. And now I'm, I'm kind of moving into more of like animation, you know, like old school, like I said, stop motion um, or just CG animation, but, but kind of more fun, simplified characters. Um, people just love that stuff. And that's, that's where my career is going these days. But... So here's some questions. Um, okay. Uh, do you always want to create functional things even when working on stylized stuff? Yes. For you? Yes. Yes, it has to work. Even if it's stylized, it has to work. And the reason it has to work is because when, as, a, as a character artist, unless I'm making a, a, a rigid statue, it has to move. And if it's not functioning right, if the proportions are weird, whatever, it's not gonna move. I mean, not gonna move right. I've seen, what is this game out now? Street Fighter VI, right? It allows you to customize your character however much you want. And you can make the craziest, goofiest looking fighters with like, you know, little tiny arms so they're like fighting like they look like this. Like, mm, 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 mm. It's hysterical, it cracks me up. Oh my God, I can't stop laughing watching these things. But Unless that's your intent to make someone laugh, it's, it's got to it's gotta function right, you know? I mean, it's, you want to do comedy, you know, make goofy-looking, goobly-looking stuff, and that, that's great. But if you want it to actually look good, it's got to work. So even like something like as simple as, let's say, we'll look at the Grim Reaper here I was making, this little concept. For me to even like move, there has to be some flesh on the bones to animate those bones, or it's just animating by magic. So just covering up, like if you're going to do a Grim Reaper, just covering it up with some flesh to at least give the illusion that he's moving and not just some magical creature, I think makes it a bit more scarier, you know? Functionality, it, it works. You know, when you think about a tiger, tigers are gorgeous creatures. I love tigers. They're my favorite creatures on Earth. 
real creatures, that is, or still living creatures. So here's another question that may yeah. be uh, also asking that. Let me see if I can. Someone was asking why you had uh, some skin along the mouth of the, your dragons. Let me see. It was by Moshi. Why the skin on the edge of the mouth for your dragons? Skin the on the one. edge of the mouth. So I'm, yeah, I'm trying to. If you want to pull the dragon back up, and we can take a look at the head again. And maybe that ridge. Near where he's the, near the... I'm thinking he's referring to maybe uh -oh. inside the mouth. Oh, wait, hold on a second. I, How uh, long did they give you to work on the dragons? Oh, um, I would get. I'm going to end that. Sorry. It's okay. Crashed it out. That's all right. Uh, like five to eight weeks, depending on the season, if I remember correctly. Per dragon? Five to eight weeks? No, or? it was the whole thing. The whole thing. You got that, people? Five to eight weeks to make three dragons. It's all three, right? Yeah, I mean, luckily, you know, the other guys dealt with the painting of them. So I didn't have to deal with the texture work. It was just for the models. But yeah, it took me about five to eight weeks just for the, for the design and the models. There you go. There's a good time frame for you. That's also important for all of you. I saw someone talking about trying to get in the industry. What's the best way? What should be on your reel, your breakdowns? You definitely should be showing breakdowns, showing yeah. some models. But also keep that in mind. Any studio isn't just about only the artwork. It's about how much time, too, it takes. So this is a prime example he got five to eight weeks to do three full dragons for Game of Thrones. Production-ready dragons. Production for ready the model. world's most so that's Emmy winning program. That you should practice with and speeding up your sculpting process as well. Uh, yeah, so part of, part of that is also, so I have a little bit of time, I can kind of talk about how to, how to make things faster. Aside from just making the bones and drawing all that stuff and welding it together, uh, I, I should go with a little bit of how to make all the detail because a lot of people are Really obsessed with that part, or you can make a Baphomet here. Here's the devil. The image work. You mean talk about your image? Yeah. Let's talk about this thing. The surface level details what you're getting at. Is that correct? The skin? Yes, yeah, so and we talk about like when we start right. getting into the scales and stuff, or surface level detail, you, there's, a, there's a few prerequisites you need. So you probably, before you go into that part, it would be nice to have a model with UVs, and, and actual topology before we get into like heavy detail. So the process basically goes like this. We start with DynaMesh Z and Z Remesher to get our basic form. So like for something like this devil I have, you know, we'll start with something like that. I'll use Ryan Kingsland's, uh, Ryan Kingsland gave us all uh, bones that we can play with too. And I'll use his bones all the time. Thank you, Ryan. You're awesome. And I'll reshape them and make them whatever I need. If I have teeth, I'll make the teeth separate. So for this guy, again, you know, these are all parts that I make separately and we stick them together at the end. Um, but for posing, here's kind of an idea of what a Z-sphere rig looks like. So I'm making a rig that looks like that so I can pose a character so we get that pose. But detail, I do want to talk about that. So the way I make detail, and I don't want to, for a dragon, I don't want to, if I can avoid having to sculpt every single little scale individually, or if I'm on a character, having to avoid sculpting every single little pore going one by one, because I don't have a year in which to work on a piece, I need to figure out a way to make that fast. So the way I do that is I use a lot of photo tricks. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to import Oh, you know, I should have gotten two screens because this is the problem. Whoa! Oh, maybe I could just do it this way. Ha! Okay. All right. So I'm really looking forward to seeing this. I've waited to see you again for a number of years and to see you in action here on the stage. Uh -huh. The Mobian Studios is, is a sheer joy for us. So, you saw before I... Um, Oh, maybe I should just show you real quick in Photoshop. Where's Photoshop? Uh, this is it's there. It's right there. It. All right, just so you don't drive yourself crazy, right? Easy thing to do is to go ahead, grab yourself a picture of some scales. And they don't have to be perfect. You don't have to find black and white scales. It could be any old scales, but you just need some kind of pattern to work from. So in this case, I'm going to go and open up um, 
I opened up originally, I used uh, this image. Let's take a look at that. Okay. okay. Right? Now, the problem with this image is, is I can't just use, just paint this onto a creature and get scales from this because there's a lot of information in here that doesn't work so good when we try to sculpt it out. And I'll kind of show you what I mean by that in a bit. But I'll take an image like this, bring that into Photoshop. Um, I say I'll take an image. Oh, here we go. And on top of that, I'll create a layer. So that I'm basically going to trace out the patterns of those scales. I'm just a little offset here, but you get the idea that I'm going to go in with black and white and trace out the patterns of that scale to make an image that looks like this. This is an image that now I can use to start actually sculpting my scales into. Because I need to be able to separate each scale out. And I need to, in order to use certain kinds of masking, I need to have basically a clean graphic black and white image to start with. So I'm going to take that image now. And I've made it, in this case, to make my life easy, I've made it on a, the texture itself is on a square uh, 20, 20, by, 20 by 48 by 20 by 48 image. Or it could be a full 4K image, depending on how much scale or how big it's going to be. And I can just simply go in here and say texture, and bam. So now, excuse me, I've got um, the texture right here on my piece. And what's great is, is there's a little thing here called. And you're just bringing it in through the texture tab there? Yeah, that's it. Bump viewer material. So what bump viewer material is going to allow me to do is to get a three-dimensional kind of preview of what I'm going to see when I start displacing out that black and white information. So from here, I'm going to go ahead now. Now, since this, the polyplane is only 1,000 polygons, that's not really enough to sculpt on. So I'm going to go ahead and yeah, make sure that it's a polymesh 3D, which this is not. So I'm going to say, uh, make polymesh 3D. Oh, it got rid of my texture map. That's all right. We'll put it back on there. Just turn it back on. And now I can go ahead and subdivide up this polyplane. And we'll go to about 4 million for this one. Cool. And also, what you're going to want to do is go into your material and go open up your modifiers real quick. And you'll notice that there's this little thing when you're using bump your material called color bump. And it's set by default to negative 5. And let's just set that to negative 1. Because we don't want it to like burst out at us, but we do want to see what it's doing. And now you can see by basically drawing in that, that simple black and white image, I create something like this. Now, it doesn't really have all the fun um, stuff that the real scales have. It looks very flat compared to the image of the original creature. So what I can do now, though, is go ahead and say, go into masking and say mask by intensity. Mass by color, mass by intensity. So there's just all different kinds of ways you can mask this. You can mask by color. You can, you know, if there's there's a thousand of ways you could, I could go on all day about all the different masking features you can apply to these things. But just to make your life simple, this is the way I. One of my favorite feature sets, masking. Yeah, I mean, there's so much you can do with it. Yeah. So in this case, you know, I can go ahead now and just pull out like a uh, clay tube brush. CBC. Oh, right. Not to be confused. Clay buildup. Clay buildup, CBC, yeah. And I like to use this alpha. Alpha number 20 is one of my favorite alphas. The reason I like alpha number 20 is because it's got a little bit of like uh, a grit to it. So I can kind of see what I'm doing. Oh. And I could just start going and sculpting out scales. Or I could be even really smart. And now, since you guys got so awesome, you made this thing called thick skin. Now we really get into it. So. It's important to have a thick skin when you're a dragon. Yeah, thick skin basically allows everything to just be at a certain level. So I can add thick skin. Oh, also morph targets. So before I start sculpting anything, first thing I want to do is I'm going to store a morph target. Reason for that, I'll get into one sec. You got about five minutes left, Dan. Oh my god, I've got to go so fast. OK. Basically, so masking by intensity. I masked everything by intensity. I'm going to use W. I'm going to pull, whoa. 
Oh! Hold on. <laughs> Where? All right, masking. So we'll go mask by intensity. You have to forgive me. I have everything like usually so like hot keyed that I would oh, go so okay. fast you wouldn't even see what I was doing. No apologies necessary. All right, all right. So mask by poly, mask by intensity. Mm -hmm. You can't see the mask because it's a bump viewer material, but just know that it's there. Because now if I pull, if I just use my, my manipulator hey brush. Now, seat, look at that. I could pull it up and I get scales. And if I don't like certain parts, right, wow. I could go and pull out my morph brush and go morph back. Or because I have masking, now let's just switch it to a basic material so we can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing. I'm going to turn off the, uh, the texture map so we can just see the mask. So I've set this to here. Now, if I go ahead and increase the mask, I'm going to go ahead now and say grow mask. Actually, I'm going to inverse it. And now I'm going to shrink mask. There you go. Okay. That's the stuff of life. Right? So now look at that. Already it's starting to look real just, just because we see that like difference in coloration. And now I'll inverse this mask again. And let's turn off the mask so I'm not looking at it. So we'll just go into these again are things you guys might want to hot up, key. Up, up, up. Control H. Control H. Control H will hide the mask? Really? Yep. Oh. So I have like buttons on the bottom for mm -hmm. that. But if you just now hit morph, right? Now you could sink in those scales a little bit. Yeah, and you got, a, you got a gradient on it now. Now you got a nice little gradient. You're starting to get something that looks nice. That's you cool. can even get really funky. And we can go ahead now and let's just remask everything by intensity. No, because the texture's off. So let's put the texture map back on. And we'll go into masking, mask by intensity. And I'm going to turn the texture off again real quick so we can see what we're doing. And I'm just going to go ahead now and inflate a little bit. Maybe a little, little smooth, but OK. So now we very quickly here got some really cool scales that are not on a dragon that are instead on a flat plane. So what the hell is that good is that going to do me? Well, what good is that going to do me is, is now I'll just take this image and I'm going to align it here real quick. And now I'm going to convert this into a three-dimensional alpha by just simply going grab doc. There's other ways. There's fancy ways, too. I can get into like making overlapping scales using vector displacement maps and so, so on and so forth. But because I only have five minutes, this is kind of a great way just to start laying out surface detail. And I recommend this technique on any kind of thing you have. So in this case, I'm going to go to this devil creature here I started making. And let's, right now, he's got kind of all human skin and pores. But let's give him some reptile scales instead. Hmm. And so the way I can do that is I'm going to turn off the color. Now I'm just going to smooth this out real quick, just so we can start putting reptile scales on them. And I'm going to take this black and white image, and I'm going to say make texture. I'm going to take that texture now, and I'm going to add that to my spotlight. I'm going to flip it. Oh, no, I don't have to flip it. But most importantly, it, it's um, wherever is black, is now you know, kind of see-through. So I'm just going to turn the intensity up a little bit, just so it's not completely uh, you know, doing the crazy stuff. And shrink this a little. And I'm also going to turn on opacity so I can kind of see through it a bit. And now what I can do is I can take my devil guy. Actually, let's flip this around the other way. And what's great is, so that, those scales fit that one face. Now I could just go ahead and try to paint it on there. But one of the great things too, real quick, is that we've got this thing called, um, what is this thing called here? Oh yeah, nudge, right? So I've got this image, I'm gonna turn this off. And now using, instead of using inflate, I'm gonna switch this to my move tool. Make sure that we don't have like any crazy polygroup masking on. And now I could take these scales, and I'm going to make my, my cursor pretty big for this. And you see I could start to take these scales now and move them and place them so that they actually fit nicely onto the surface. Cool. 
just, so just real quick, I'm going to do this. And what's great is, too, unlike Photoshop, you can like smooth this out just by hitting smooth. And instead of it, like a relaxed feature where it returns back to where it was, instead this will just kind of relax it, but without having it go all the way back to its original points. And I can give them like scaly lips or whatever. And once I like kind of what I have here, I'm going to switch back to Z, and I'm going to go into my standard brush. Or we're paint. Uh, paint works, too. Time. We're at time. Baby. Oh! Yeah. So show them real quick. Show them real quick. Yeah. All right, I'm going to make it real quick. Don't stop, don't so stop. basically, all you want to do, all you want to do is get a uh, the, the standard brush, turn that off, RGB, paint it on there. Whoop. Undo. Yep. Not Z-add. Yep. Good we're job. We're just going to paint it on there. There you go. Booyah! Right? So I got my detail there. Now I'm going to go masking. Mask Ooh, by intensity. Dang. Displace. Turn off color. Yep. And there you go. And there you go. And then you're off to the races. You just put that on there and... Wow, Dan, that Voila. was incredible. Give him a round of applause, everybody at home. We're over the well, time. Well, that hour went fast. What can you yeah, do? Yeah, it goes real Dan fast. Catcher, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you so much. Master of Monsters, Father of Dragons. I know we had, we had one last thing. I don't know if we have time for it. In the, in the booth, do we have time to show the dragon up and a little close while we're yeah, talking here? we should do that we're real quick. Up. Let's, Let's get show that. it up close if you have. A real dragon right above his head. Don't, don't look too quickly. You might get don't, scared. Don't, don't, don't be too fast there. Don't, yeah, we've, uh, All right, let's take a look. Dan there shared the... Uh, oh. <laughs> you can bring it right here on set with Dan. Yeah. You know, he's got oh. a magic of AR. Yes. So, uh, look at that. There you go. There's, there's <laughs> a, another representation of seeing what it's colored, what it looks like. Um, the finished and product. This is all the details that he's talking about that he was just sharing with you all. In the yeah, that's, that's exactly how it's done. So you would say that's an accurate representation of what the finished thing would look like if you weren't under the gun and only an hour in with us. Yeah. Well, and also it's a... Uh, I think it's rendered in, uh, what is it, Unreal? Yeah, yeah. Th th that one's in Unreal, yeah. Yeah, it's in Unreal, so... <laughs> the whole thing that you're sitting inside of right now is, uh, is an Unreal... Yeah, so Unreal's fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, so we want to thank you um, on behalf of everybody yeah. oh, here. Oh, thank you guys. applause to you for being here. It's so nice to see you again. Paul Gabriel, we are going to have uh, some prizes, and I'm going to, I guess... Yeah, when we come back, we'll, we'll get ready back. for the prizes. Say bye Dan, to Dan. thank you for being a part of the presentation. And oh, my pleasure, guys. This year. Any last words, Paul, before I send them off? No, you got the last okay. words. Okay. I'm Louis Tucci, and you're watching day one proper of the Zebra Summit 2022. Thanks again, everybody at home, and we'll see you in a moment. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>